Hi, I'm Carly Potter. Welcome to the Lead Safe video. This resource has been created to help you understand lead poisoning and how it could affect your children. In this program, we're going to meet some experts as well as a family who will show us how they minimise the risks in their own home. We're here today at Argentine Public School where some of the students have produced a song about lead safety. It's a lot of fun. We're going to check it out a bit later. Look, the most important thing to remember is that lead poisoning is preventable. If you stick with us, we'll show you some very easy ways to make your home safer and healthier at the same time. It's easy to do, but it's up to you. So let's get started. We gotta wash our hands, we gotta mop our floors, we gotta stop that lead dust. We get indoors, we gotta wash, mop, and stop that lead dust. Lead is one of the most common heavy metals in our environment and it's used to make hundreds of everyday products. So we need to be aware that exposure to lead in its various forms can lead to serious health problems, especially in young children. Today, the most common forms of lead exposure are lead-based paints and contamination through local heavy industry, and they still pose serious health risks. So if you're renovating an older home or you live in a lead-affected area, there are a few simple precautions you need to take. Lead poisoning is known to cause learning deficiencies and behavioural problems, so as parents we need to protect our kids' future. Lead can affect almost every organ in the body. It's particularly a problem for very young children around three years of age and younger because they take the lead in through their mouth and they put their hands in their mouth when they put toys in their mouth. And this lead can affect their overall development, their behaviour and even their growth. Lead that has uh, been accumulated in the mother's body over time can pass through the placenta into the unborn baby and then that can have an impact on the baby's development from birth. Well it can be a problem for adults as well, it can cause high blood pressure, it can cause nerve dysfunctions and it can cause infertility as well. It is easy to be lead safe, it's a question of watching how the children are exposed to lead, it's a question of uh, keeping children's hands clean trying to reduce the amount of dust, which will include lead dust in the environment, addressing lead paint sources. In some houses and during some renovations, it is quite a challenge and at those times it's often best for the family to be out of the house while it's repaired. As we've just seen, lead is a fairly common material, so we need to take a look at the everyday things we do and the way we live in our homes. Now, if you're renovating, there are some very specific risks, especially if you live in an older home, like the one that Sharon and Simon live in. How are you guys doing? Good, thanks. Very, very, good. very good, thank you. Now, you guys have done a lot of work on the home already, but there's still some stuff that needs to be done. Can you talk us through it? Well, first off, we've got lead paint here, which is flaking into the garden, so we're going to strip that back and repaint it and then we're going to rip out this garden here um, and put, make it into a flower bed. Okay. So that way we're not getting lead into any of the veggies. Yeah, you don't want the little ones getting no, in there, yeah. that's right. So that's one section we're doing there. Mm -hmm. Then over here on the veggie garden, we're going to raise it up and put new soil in. Yep. So that the veggies, are, once again, aren't bringing up the lead. Sure. You just want to keep it away from the normal lawn, yeah? Yes, yes, yeah. that's right. So we'll have fresh soil, um, probably to four or five hundred high. Mm -hmm. The roots can't get down to the lead. And you're going to build that in yourself? Yes, yes. Pretty easy task? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll soon see, won't we? Yeah. And uh, Rebecca's play area, is that safe now? Or not? not to the extent that we'd like it. Mm. Um, we'll probably move it out from the fence a little bit. And we're going to put some rubber matting on the ground uh, to keep the kids off the, the leaded soil. Yep. Just to make it a bit safer. That should look really good. Mm, I'm happy so. Our uh, good news is we're getting an expert in to help you with the painting, so you won't have to do everything yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very good news. The most important thing is that we do all of these jobs in a lead safe way. Now, what we're going to do right now is go and check out some of the main sources of lead around the home. Inside the home, painted timber is the main culprit. Things like windows and doors, skirting boards, and kitchen cabinets are all within reach of small children. While on the exterior of some older homes, just about everything is painted, which makes for a lot of paint and a lot of lead. 
Now peeling paint like this is a problem because lead paint actually tastes sweet. If a kid puts it in their mouth, there's a very good chance they'll go back for more. Even a piece this size could significantly increase the lead levels in your child's blood. But it's not just the peeling paint that's a problem. Surfaces subject to friction, like windows and doors, can be a source of lead. General wear and tear on painted surfaces releases the dust particles into the air, which contaminates household dust. This dust can collect in places like window wells, places that kids have easy access to. Of course, most dust settles on the ground, so old carpets can be a source of lead too. The backyard is another major source of lead. This is where children may come into contact with contaminated soil. In young children, this is usually ingested as a direct result of hand-to-mouth contact. Toys and play equipment can also collect dust and dirt, increasing a child's exposure to lead. Dust and dirt from outside is constantly being transferred into our homes on our shoes. And family pets are good at bringing outside dirt into the home too. Their coats easily collecting and carrying dust everywhere they go. Now, without looking at your lyrics, can you tell me what you know about keeping safe? Yes? you got to keep washing your hands every day for lunch and recess. And do you guys do that every day at school here? Yeah. You have to... Yes. And what if somebody forgets? Do you remind them? Yes. Yeah. yeah? We have people out the front of the toilets make sure they wash their hands. Really? Yeah. Lead safety monitors? Mm -hmm. Yeah? And what about when you're at home? Do you remember to do it at home as well? Yes. yes. What about if you see your little brother and sister or just other little kids playing with a toy and they look like they're going to stick it in their mouth. Well, I'll just tell my nephew to not to. If yep. they can be lead, like the paint on it can come off if they chew it or something. Yep. You can remind them not to do that and anymore. remind them to wash their hands. Very good stuff. The same with Alice. To keep our bodies safe, there are two things we must do. We must wash our fruit and veggies and, and wash our hands too. To keep our bodies safe, safe, there are two things we must do. We must wash our fruit and veggies and wash our hands too. OK, good. Let's take it from the top. It is time to start work at the Clifford's home. Simon, this is Ian. G'day. Hello. Now, Ian has come in from the TAFE. He teaches painting and lead abatement, which is a big word. I don't know what that means. Uh, lead abatement basically is the um, process of removing lead-based paint safely, just containing the area. That's, that's it. OK. And now, actually, Simon here knows quite a bit about lead safety, but do you have any other tips for him? Yes, yeah, Simon, the basic ones that we have to look at is just making sure you wear a um, good respirator, just a dust mask. Um, we need to have protective gloves on just so the, the lead paint doesn't get into your, into your nails. And then um, just some old clothes. First of all, we'll lay down the, um, the stakes so we've got a containment area. Mm -hmm. And then we'll tape these sheets in so we've got a nice little curve at the back. Okay, so I mean, what I'm doing is actually just creating a sump down the back here just to contain all the water if any um, comes down and it just forces everything into that one point so when we're actually rolling the, the plastic up we can contain it in that one area. While we're doing this is just to stop the, um, the dust or any contaminants that we may produce while we're outside coming through and contaminating the inside of the, um, the house itself. Okay, so we're just going to put this um, garbage bag underneath where we're going to scrape. Yep, about there. Yep, that looks good. And we'll just tape him in. That way when we actually scrape it off with the water and everything, it'll just run straight into the, uh, into the garbage bag. Yep. We've got a scraper yep. and we've got some um, sugar soap in a spray bottle with some water. What I'll get you to do is actually spray it and then we'll scrape it. But we just need to put our mask on before we start. Lead paint removal should never be done in windy conditions. Even a slight breeze can carry lead dust off into your yard and surrounding areas. So Simon, with this sort of area here, we don't have flaking paints and we just want to smooth it out, so we can actually just wet sand it. Mm -hmm. We've got sugar soap in the, in the water, mm -hmm. so what we'll do is use a sponge to actually wet the surface, then we we'll use some wet and dry sandpaper to actually just smooth it off. And as you can see, there's no dust. And we have a towel down the bottom or some rags just to collect any sort of um, water for runoff. 
just so that we don't contaminate anything else. Now you've done that, now we can just wipe it off with a sponge and you'll see it's as easy as that. After this kind of work, your hair, skin and clothes will be contaminated with lead dust. So it's important to make sure you shower and change before you catch up with your kids or a pregnant partner. Work gear should be washed separately to save spreading the dust to other clothes. Now tell me, what do we need to do to wrap this up? Basically we have to um, just fold the plastic on top of one another just to contain all the debris that we have in it and then we just uh, dispose of it following local counter regulations. And I see you haven't even uh, removed all of the paint. No, we only have to remove the, uh, the flaking paint. Once we've done that, we can then just encapsulate it with a good quality oil base or water based undercoat and then we can go on from there. Excellent, well I'll let you guys finish the job now. As you can see this is what this is all about, just uh, preventing the spread of lead particles that might come through dust or any debris that you create when removing old paint. And the exact same principles apply on the inside of the house, which is what we're going to do next. Go and check out some interior renovations and show you how you can do it safely. Now Simon and Sharon have done a lot of work on their home by themselves, but there are bigger jobs that require professional help. Now lead dust from many different sources may have collected in your wall cavities and ceiling spaces over the years. So if you're thinking about removing these, the walls or the ceilings, you need to get professionals in to help remove the lead dust. Look, it's an extra step, but it will ensure that your home is lead safe. Now what do we need to do with a wall like this? Like we did over the cliff edge, we need to find some paint that's flaking or exposed surface. We can then put a lead test kit over the top of it to tell whether we've actually got lead present. So what we do is we take it out, we'll snap it to mix the chemicals and give it a shake. I've never even heard of those before, where do you get them? You get them from nearly all the hardware and paint shops. Um, they've been specially designed with a chemical that basically it turns the surface red once you put it on. So if it turns red that means that it is lead paint? You can guarantee once it's gone red you really need to take some precautions to actually do the painting itself. Now Ian, I'm personally not a big fan of sanding. Do we need to sand this kind of area? We never ever sand lead based paint. It contaminates the whole area and we need to um, look at a different process if we do that and commercial painters can do it better than we can. Uh, the best way for this surface itself is a scouring pad and the sugar soap. It keys the surface and gets rid of all the um, grease and oil without actually creating dust. Okay, the next step we're going to do is actually lay down plastic drop sheet on the, on the ground. These can be bought at any um, hardware store or paint shop. We're actually going to attach it to the top of the skirting board so that the water, if any, can run underneath. Okay, so it's taped down. What we need to do now is just lay a towel down along the edge of the wall to stop or collect any of the excess water. First of all, I need to get some protective clothes on, so disposable overalls and rubber gloves. Okay, we're going to mix up the sugar soap now. Now the sugar soap's at a mixture of two cupfuls to a five litre bucket of warm water. Now what that's for is so that we can put it into a spray bottle. We get our scouring pad. You can use wet and dry sandpaper as well, but through years of experience we've found that scouring pads just do just as good a job. We actually then spray the surface. We start from the bottom and work our way up. The reason that we actually do spray it on is so that we don't put too much water onto the surface. The towel at the bottom then absorbs all of the um, moisture. So as you can see we aren't creating any dust whatsoever. And we're getting a nice clean surface once we're finished. Yeah. Once we're finished going over the whole wall with the scouring pad and the sugar soap, we then we'll wash it down with a, a, um, a clean cloth and then wait for it to dry and then we'll apply a coat of um, a good quality oil based or water based undercoat over the top of it. Okay now we're just going to wrap everything up, feed it all into the centre of the actual plastic so that we don't lose anything out including the towel. That way nothing can get contaminated. We dispose of that to local council regulations. Once we've disposed of all the remnants, we can basically paint it and it's as simple as that. 
Now we've dealt with lead paint removal where the paint is cracking or peeling, but this window is in great condition. It is still lead paint, however, and when you put it up or down, it creates lead particles, lead dust getting into your lounge room and getting near your kids, which you don't want. Now you have two options here. You can repaint the entire window with unleaded paint or simply get into the habit of wet wiping it on a regular basis. Well, in my role I go to a lot of houses and it's, uh, it's not uncommon for babies to put things in their mouths, their hands, food, fingers, dummies, toys off the floor, you know, that's part of their development, okay? So it's important that we maintain certain principles. Good hand washing, especially before they eat food, making sure that toys are washed so that lead particles don't get transferred from toy to mouth, making sure that children don't pick up food from the floor. Getting them to sit at the table in particular, not sit on the floor. So it's important that those basic principles are maintained. You wash their hands, you wash their toys, wash their dummies, anything that they're putting to their mouth. If lead dust is a problem in your area, dry dusting and sweeping will transfer the lead into the air, helping it spread throughout your home. By using wet cloths and mops, you can trap the dust, preventing it from spreading through the house. Sugar soap is perfect for cleaning household surfaces that are exposed to lead dust. Just mix the solution as directed on the bottle and be sure to wear gloves and to dispose of the water carefully. When vacuuming, a machine fitted with a HEPA filter will help minimise the spread of dust throughout the home. Do you guys keep an eye out for the smaller kids to yeah, make sure? Yeah, yeah. Because yep. they get to wash their hands. And... and does anyone here have any little brothers and sisters at this school? Oh, yes. Lots of you. Wow. And so, do you try and teach them the right thing to do? Yeah. Yes. And what do you do to help keep your school lead safe? Well, I stand out in front of the toilets and make sure people wash their hands. Yeah. Well, what you do? Yes. Yeah, then, where they go up to lunch, you see if they wash their hands. If they haven't, you send them back. And if they keep annoying you, you just go to the teacher or someone. The reason we have to wash our hands so we don't eat the lead if we've just been playing in the dirt and we eat a sandwich. Now, as we said earlier, lead contaminated soil can be quite a risk to children if they come into direct contact with it. They can also take it into the house on their shoes and the family pets can uh, be a source to take the uh, potentially contaminated soil inside. What we need to do outside is uh, create a barrier. That's what Simon is doing here. I quite like what you've done with the colours. Oh, isn't it great? Yeah, it's <laughs> taken a little while with uh, Rebecca's help. But yes, we're going to use these rubber mats. <coughs> They're quite colourful. And they just piece together like a jigsaw, yeah? Yep, just clip in like that, they do. Excellent. So uh, had you guys discussed any other options for out here? We had. Um, we've talked about pavers, which are going to be too hard if the kids fall over. Sure. Um, so turf, but we've got a tree there so there's too much shade that the grass won't actually grow quite properly. Yeah. And this of course is going to cover a nice wide area for Rebecca so that she doesn't get her hands into the soil. It is, it is. Um, the thing is too, this originally was sitting up on pallets okay. and they got very old, so we removed them and as you can see we've got bare soil. Sure. So we needed some sort of barrier. Yep, cover uh, this right up. Yeah, and we decided that this was the best one to go with because it was nice and soft. Looks good, she looks pretty happy. She is, she loves playing <laughs> with it. How about we go and check out that vegetable garden now? Certainly. The level's level. You look at that there. This is it level? You're going to make it level. Now, as I told you earlier, we we're going to have quite a few experts yeah, in on this project, and I've got one right here with me. This is Gary. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thanks. Now, you are Simon's dad and grandfather to Rebecca. That's correct, yes. And uh, I know Rebecca's a hard little worker, but what about Simon? He's a jolly good worker. Yeah. Yes, yes. He's, he's put in a lot of hard effort yes. today. Yes. Now, Simon, uh, as we were actually looking at earlier, there were paint flakes uh, in your garden bed, which was right near your exterior back wall. Yep. This uh, garden bed here, nowhere near a wall, but the soil can still be contaminated? It certainly can. Um, for the particular fact that we live fairly close to an, um, a lead smelter. Right. And they use the, the slag from that smelter in a lot of these properties to uh, to fill the land. Wow, so even though it was quite some time ago, it can still be affected? Of course, yeah. there was no education on in those days either. Yeah. Um, but 
when we get the north, northerly winds blowing, we get a fair bit of lead dust comes over this right. way, which also gets into the soil. So what you can do to help though is uh, raise the garden bed, which is what you've already done here, mm -hmm. and you're going to put in a whole uh, uh, tray full of fresh soil, yeah? Exactly. Um, that way the plants can get into some fresh stuff. They won't be won't be taking the lead up into the into the fruit and yeah. veggies. And uh, what kind of vegetables are we looking at? Ah, some cabbage, tomatoes, we love our tomatoes. Yeah. With the veggie patch, it's very important if there's lead in the soil, such as in an old industrial area, if there's slag around it, or just long-term lead falling out of the, uh, the sky from the smokestacks, is that we have to assume it's got lead in it until we test it and prove that it hasn't. If we have to work with the lead in the soil, then in terms of vegetables, it's important to bring new soil in, build up the base of the veggie patch, when we take the vegetables out of the uh, patch, we clean, clean them, wash them in running water to remove lead from uh, the leafy vegetables. And we make sure we remove potentially leaded soil around the base of the root vegetables like carrots. In some situations, you will need to remove contaminated soil from your backyard. Slag is a particularly toxic lead byproduct and should also be disposed of carefully. Contact your local council for more information. There are a few options when creating a barrier against exposed dirt. You can promote grass growth by laying fresh topsoil, or you can cover the offending areas with a range of materials, including turf, pavers, chip bark and outdoor matting. If you have a veggie patch and garden beds, you can cover the soil with compost and mulches. They'll actually help the nutrient levels in the garden. But if you live near a smelter or, say, a busy street, don't use the lawn clippings. They'll have a lot of lead dust in them. When it comes to the family pet, they will have the most contact with the soil in the yard. So you need to prevent them bringing lead dust into the house by either keeping them outside or fencing off your gardens. If you are concerned about the soil on your land, you really should have it tested. We've got to wash our hands. And what about with your pets? Because I know I have. Oh yes. Um, we gotta wash them and their coats. Yep. Gotta make them clean. You guys, have you got pets? Yes. yes. Yep. Yeah. You got a turtle. I've yeah. got frogs. Frogs? Do they bring soil into the house? No. Are they already in the house? Where do they live? In a fish tank. Ah oh, right. So you yeah. don't have to be too worried about them. No. Who here is looking forward to doing your lead safety rap song? <laughs> Who reckons they're going to be the star of the song? All of you? No. What about you? You seem like a pretty good rapper. Do I not? You do? <laughs> <laughs> do I don't you... think so. No? I think you were doing very well. What about the girls? Any rappers? Yeah? Uh, sorta. You like it? Yes, I like it. What we didn't know was a lake could make you sick. But what we didn't know was a lake could make you sick. We gotta wash our hands, we gotta mop our floors, we gotta stop that lead dust, we gotta get indoors, we gotta wash, mop, stop that lead dust. Like her lead levels have been really good up until she was two. Yeah. So then I really didn't need to have her yeah, tested anymore. Yeah. But Simon said to me, hey, she's outside yes. now and she's out there in the dirt. She's playing outside more now than what she did when she was, say, 12 months. Yeah. So my idea is how she needs to be tested again. But that's Lead poison can be fatal. That's the bottom line. And you want to decrease any type of detrimental effect to your child's health. So it's important that they have a blood test. If children aren't screened at the right time, they may go on to develop uh, high lead levels in their blood, in their bones and other organs, and this may have an impact throughout their entire life. Come on through. Look at that big chair. You're playing with my toys there for a minute just while I get my things ready? Okay, that's a good girl. Two's very good. Get my gloves on and we'll have a look at your arm in a minute. If children live in a lead affected area, uh, if they're in a house or building that's being renovated and we think there's lead paint, or if their parents work in a lead industry, lead related industry, then it's important they be tested because they may have no symptoms and we need to do the blood test to find out if they've actually got a high lead level. So we'd like to test them at one year of age and again at about two years of age. And if both those blood lead levels are below 10, we can relax and assume they're not going to be suffering any effects of lead poisoning. If things change, such as there's new lead exposures, then we need to reconsider that and maybe test them again.
Well, well Sharon and Simon have done a great job. Um, like Sharon said earlier, they've just had Becky tested and her levels are actually fine. But for her own peace of mind, she really felt that that was important, even though Becky knows to wash her hands, knows not to pick food up off the floor, but she is going out a lot more into the yard. And I know that um, her dad in particular was very concerned about, about that because they're not sure, you know, if there's lead contamination in the yard, etc. Very young children absorb a lot more lead from what they eat than what adults do. So they may absorb more than 50%, more than 60% of the lead that actually goes into their stomach. So what we need to do is try and reduce that absorption. The best way to do that is to give children a lot of fruit and vegetables and dairy products and to give them frequent meals because it's the empty stomach that lets more of the lead get absorbed. Workers can bring home lead to their family from a range of industries. Painters particularly removing lead paint from bridges, from old buildings, um, people working in the automotive industry, people who solder a lot, work with lead solder. There's also a risk uh, with lead lighting, uh, making sinkers and in uh, making ammunition. So we know that lead exists in our environment and we're showing you some ways to minimise the risk to yourself and your family. Look, there's a lot of information out there. You can contact your local community health centre, the council or even try the EPA. Right now though, let's go back over some of the main points. Young children are at greatest risk of lead poisoning because of their tendency for hand-to-mouth activity. This natural behaviour in young children makes them more likely to find and swallow lead if their surroundings are contaminated. Wash window sills, window wells and floors with sugar soap. Instead of dusting, wet wipe with a damp cloth, rinsing away any trapped dust at regular intervals. When renovating, keep kids and pregnant women clear of the work site. You need to minimise the spread of dust and prevent any debris from contaminating the surrounding soil. Take care in the cleaning process, that's yourself, your clothes and the work area, before the kids return. Eat a balanced diet, making sure to include plenty of foods high in calcium, iron and zinc to reduce lead absorption. In the backyard, minimise contact with bare soil by creating barriers, especially in play areas and gardens. Hose down kids' outdoor play equipment and wash their toys regularly. Make hand washing a habit, especially before meals and bedtime, and it's a good idea to keep your kids' nails trim. Regularly wash dummies, teats, toys and anything children normally put in their mouths. If you're in doubt about the lead content of old paint or contaminated soil around your house, you need to have these areas tested. Finally, it's important to remember that you won't see the signs of lead poisoning. So if you believe you or your family have been exposed, you need to have your blood lead levels tested. It's the only way to be sure. Well, we're back here at the Clifford. Simon and Sharon, thank you very much for letting us come over and watch you uh, work very hard. Uh, are you happy with the results? Yes, quite happy actually. Um, the garden bed came up a treat. Um, it was handy to have Ian here. Yep. Give some handy tips on the, on the wall, the paint on the wall. Yep. And of course my father with his carpentry hands. All in all, the, uh, the backyard looks pretty good. Uh, oh, which bit yeah. do you like the most? Um, I think the veggie garden. Yeah. Even though I'm not the green thumb of the family, I think the veggie garden's really good and now we'll be able to eat vegetables out of the garden and not worry about the lead in our veggies, exactly. which is really good. And the thing is, everything we've done is going to make it safer around the place for Rebecca and, and her friends. Well guys, it's been great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Excellent. You. Now we're going to go out now with a song put together by the kids at Argenton Public School about lead safety. Let's go get into the sand pit, hey? Sounds like a good idea. Excellent. Do you want to get in the sand pit? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> 100 years ago they found lead in the ground. They started digging down and they tunnelled all around. Miners brought it out and it made our country rich. They piled up the dirt and it worked without a hitch. But what we didn't know was lead can make us sick. But what we didn't know was that lead can make us sick. We've got to wash our hands, we've got to mop our floors, we've got to stop that lead dust from getting indoors. We've got to wash, mop and stop that lead dust. The wind's been blowing around, putting lead dust on the ground. Some houses are quite old, so lead paint might be found. We've got to fix, fix, fix them up to keep our family safe. We gotta wash our hands, we gotta mop our floors, we gotta stop that lead dust from getting indoors, we gotta wash, mop, and stop that lead dust. Lead dust is everywhere when our yards are looking bare. 
Make a safe haven for lots of kids to play on. Keep our body safe, there are two things we must do. Wash our fruit and veggies, wash your hands too. To keep our body safe, there are two things we must do. Wash our fruit and veggies, wash your hands too. We gotta wash our hands, we gotta mop our floors, we gotta stop that lead dust from getting indoors. We gotta wash, mop, and stop that lead dust. Lead dust all around us, so we gotta make it safe. It really is quite simple to wash your hands and face. Cats and dogs get dusty and they shouldn't play inside. It isn't hard to fix this, keep them outside. We gotta wash our hands, we gotta mop our floors, we gotta